In France, a 71-year-old man is on trial over allegations of drugging his wife and inviting dozens of strangers to her in their home over a period of nearly a decade. This is one of the saddest and most shocking cases I have ever covered on this channel. Viewers' discretion is advised. A 71-year-old French man, Dominique Pellicot, is accused of drugging his wife, Giselle, over nearly a decade and inviting dozens of men to essay her while she was unconscious. He, along with 50 other men, is set to go on trial in Avignon, France. Although 51 suspects are facing trial in connection with the case, authorities allege that Giselle, 72, was essayed by 83 different attackers in at least 92 separate incidents. Dominique Pellicot appeared to be the quintessential man next door, a trained electrician, entrepreneur, and avid cyclist. His middle child and only daughter, who writes under the pen name Caroline Darian, described him as a warm and attentive father in her 2022 book about the case, and I stopped calling you Papa. In an effort to turn her family trauma into action, she founded a nonprofit organization called Don't Put Me to Sleep, aimed at raising awareness about the dangers of drug-facilitated crimes. In her book, Caroline recalled how her father was the one who drove her to school, picked her up from parties late at night, supported and comforted her. Her mother, on the other hand, was the steady breadwinner, working as a manager at a company in the Paris area for 20 years. When Giselle retired, she and Dominique moved to a house with a large garden and pool in Mazan, a small town northeast of Avignon. The couple often hosted their three children and grandchildren for summer vacations, filled with late dinners on the terrace where the family would debate, hold dance competitions, and play Trivial Pursuit. I thought of us as happy, their daughter wrote. I thought my parents were. Dominique and Giselle, who are now divorcing after more than 40 years of marriage, have three children and two grandchildren. Following his arrest, Giselle, who is now in her 70s, has changed her surname. In 2020, three women reported Dominique Pellicot to the police after he was caught trying to use his camera to film up their skirts in a grocery store. He was subsequently arrested. The police seized his two cell phones, two cameras, and other electronic devices, including his laptop. Upon examining the devices, the police reportedly discovered 300 photographs and a video showing an unconscious woman being S-A'd by multiple people. They also uncovered Skype messages in which Pellico boasted about drugging his wife and invited others to join him in S-A'ing her while she was unconscious. For years, Giselle had been experiencing hair loss, weight loss, and memory lapses. She would forget entire days and sometimes seem to be in a dreamlike state. Her children and friends feared she might be suffering from Alzheimer's. However, in late 2020, after being summoned to a police station in southern France, she learned a far more devastating truth. Her husband of 40 years, Dominique Pellico, had been secretly crushing sleeping pills into her food and drink, rendering her unconscious, and then S.A.ing her. He had also invited dozens of men into their home to film them S.I.ing her as well, in a pattern of abuse that spanned nearly a decade. He was later released on bail. During their investigation, police uncovered more than 20,000 videos and photographs, many of them dated, labeled, and stored in an electronic folder titled Abuse. The timeline of the documented abuse began in 2011, and the number of suspects eventually grew to 83. Two months after his initial arrest, Dominique Pellicot was arrested again and charged with aggravated with the R-word, drugging, and multiple counts of S.A. He was also accused of violating the privacy of his wife, daughter, and two daughters-in-law by illegally recording and in some cases distributing intimate photos of them. Using Pellico's photographs, videos, and online messages, the police spent the next two years identifying and charging the other suspects. In September 2024, 51 men, including Pellico, went on trial in Avignon in a case that has shocked France and highlighted the use of drugs in committing S.A., as well as the broader culture that allowed such crimes to occur. The accused represent a cross-section of working-class and middle-class French society, including truck drivers, soldiers, carpenters, tradesmen, a prison guard, a nurse, an IT expert working for a bank, and a local journalist. They range in age from 26 to 74, with many being parents and in relationships. Most are charged with R-wording Giselle once, while a few are accused of returning up to six times to S.A. her. Since his arrest, Dominique Pellicot, 71, has always declared himself guilty, according to his lawyer, Beatrice Zavaro. He is not at all contesting his role. 
He admits that he did what he did, as well as the conditions in which he did it. And there was not an ounce of contestation during the entire investigation, right up to the committal order. In contrast, some of the other defendants have denied the R charges. Some argued that they believed the husband's permission was sufficient, while others claimed they thought the victim had consented to being drugged. When the police showed Giselle some of the photographs they say her husband had meticulously classified and stored, she was deeply shocked. She and her husband had been together since for almost five decades, and she had described him to the police as caring and considerate. She had no memory of being S.A.ed, either by him or by the other men, only one of whom she recognized as a neighbor in town. The first time she will consciously witness the S.A. incidents will be in the courtroom when the video recordings are played as evidence. The trial comes at a time of increased scrutiny over the handling of S.A. crimes in France. There is a kind of naivete on the topic of predators in France, a kind of denial, said Sandrine Josso, a lawmaker who led a parliamentary commission into what is known in France as chemical submission, the drugging of someone with malicious intent. Josso initiated the commission after she says she herself was drugged in 2023. A senator is currently under investigation for allegedly slipping ecstasy into her champagne. The Avignon trial is expected to draw attention to the use of drugs to prey on women and to shed light on the wide range of profiles that predators can have. They could be your neighbors without falling into paranoia, Josso remarked. During interviews with the police, details of which were included in an overview of the case by the investigative judge, Dominique Pellicot admitted that he began drugging his wife so he could do things to her and dress her in ways she would normally refuse. Over time, he started inviting others to participate. He claimed he never asked for or accepted money. Pellico met most of the men in a chat room on a notorious, unmoderated French website, which was implicated in more than 23,000 police cases in France between 2021 and 2024. The site was finally shut down, and its owner arrested in June, following an 18-month investigation that spanned across Europe. The chat room where Pellico met most of the men was called Asoninsu, meaning without their knowledge. Over the years, Pellico developed strict rules for the visitors to ensure his wife did not wake up. No smoking or wearing cologne, undressing in the kitchen, and warming their hands under hot water or on a radiator so their cold touch wouldn't wake her. According to the investigative judge's report, Pellico would clean his wife's body at the end of each night. Out of the 83 suspects, the police identified and charged 50. Only one of the men is not charged with S.A. or attempted S.A. of Giselle. Instead, that man is accused of following a similar pattern by drugging his own wife to S.A. her. Pellico is also charged with S.A.ing that man's wife while she was drugged. Five of the men also face charges for possessing child S.A. imagery. Additionally, Pellico is under investigation for the S.A. and murder of a 23-year-old woman in 1991 and the attempted S.A. of a 19-year-old in 1999. He has admitted to the attempted S.A., but denies any involvement in the 1991 homicide. The case has sparked significant reflection among the medical community, as Giselle had seen gynecologists and neurologists for a range of puzzling symptoms, but no diagnosis was ever made, according to her daughter. What I found disturbing for us doctors was that no one considered this possibility, said Dr. Gada Hatem Ganser, a well-known obstetrician gynecologist and expert on violence against women. In response, she and pharmacist Leila Chawachi have developed training programs for doctors and nurses on recognizing the symptoms of drug-facilitated assault. Contrary to popular belief, most cases of drug-facilitated assault occur at home rather than in bars, according to Chawachi, who conducts annual surveys on such offenses in France. The surveys reveal that most victims are women, and about half do not remember the attack due to blackouts. In the Avignon case, some of the accused admitted guilt to the police. According to the investigating judge's report, many claimed they were deceived into having sex with a drugged woman, believing they were participating in a consensual three-way encounter. They were told she was pretending to sleep because she was shy. Several defendants said they believed she had consented to being drugged, and essayed as part of a sex fantasy. Others argued it wasn't S.A. because her husband was present, and they assumed he could consent on her behalf. It sends shivers down the spine regarding the state of affairs in French society said Antoine Camus, who is also representing Ms. Darian and several other family members. If that's the conception of consent in sexual matters in 2024, then we have a lot, a lot, 
a lot of work to do. If he is found guilty, he faces up to 20 years in prison. Giselle reportedly wants the trial to be public, according to her attorney, Stéphane Babineau. She wants to raise awareness, as widely as possible, of what happened to her, so that events like these never happen again. Giselle said the policeman who arrested her soon-to-be ex-husband saved her life. The Avignon case continues and is due to last until December 21st. We will keep you updated on the details of the case. Please stay safe out there.